All right, so I will show you how to do these um, cube transitions because some people were wondering. In the um, app, sorry, I can't multitask. In the app, you can only go to the right. But I worked out, and this is the one I will show you, I worked out how to make them go more than just in one direction. So I will show you how I did that with these images. So let me just hide that and I have some set up. So first what you're going to do, I have these set up right here. So let me ungroup all of this so I can show you. What you're going to do is first you're going to get a shape so that you can use it for the mask, shape it, uh, size it to whatever you want, center it. And then I'm going to go in and I grabbed some of the new scenes so I could showcase those. So let's just grab that. Then I'm going to resize that to fit in the square. I'm doing this really messy because I know people know how to do this. Once it's in there, I'm going to select the background. I'm going to select the shape. I'm pressing down on my shift key and I'm going to mask it. So now it's only showing the portion that is in the mask. If I find that I didn't like that piece of it, I can double click on the mask. I'll do that again. Just go right here, double click, and I can move this around. It doesn't really look different with this background, but you get the idea. Then you click off and you see if that's what you like. Then you're going to make a second one. I tend to just duplicate it, <laughs> make it easy, and I'll unmask it, get rid of this one, go in, get another. Let me just get one that's already downloaded. And then this we can show how you're going to, whoop, I'm going to select both, mask it. That actually doesn't look too bad, but say I want to move it down or I want to have just the side of it. I can move it around. Oh, I don't like that. I can move it back by double clicking and moving it. And that does that. I'm going to do that for, for the purposes of this, I'm going to do four of them. So I already did that just so you don't have to watch me masking. So I grabbed a few scenes. I have four of them. One, two, three, four. I can rename these if I want. I can click on it, rename. And I can say that's number the first one I'm going to do. This is the second one. This is the third one. This is the fourth one. But that you can figure that out what you want to do with that. I'm going to show you the cube transition and how you can adjust it. So what you want to do and these the cube transition is under the one click transition. So I already have my first scene, my second one, my third one, etc. You need to overlap these. Then when you hover right between them, you see the green bar, you click on that and you're going to come up with a ton of different one click transitions. And you can just do any one you want. This one is going to make it go in dots. Um, for our purposes, I'm using cube. Now what you see happen is it turns. It's pretty quick, but it turns. You can make the transition longer by making the bar longer. You can make it shorter by decreasing. Now what you see here, notice how they aren't connected. That's because it's transitioning the whole um, screen and not just the masks that I did. So the images are not covering the full screen. 
if they were covering the whole screen. Let me do that. You're not going to see, see how now it's connected because it's turning the whole screen. But I don't want those. Let me make sure I undid the two. There, now they're back to the smaller size. I didn't want it to fill the whole scene. So the way that you can connect these and not make it cover the whole, um, not make it transition the whole scene is you just select both of them. See, you already see them come together. When they're not grouped, they're apart. You select both of them and I just use Command G to group them. You can also select both, click and group. I just tend to use the shortcut. Now they're together and it doesn't transition the whole screen. It only transitions. Okay, I did a quick stop and I'm back. I had to cut something out because it was too confusing. So we've got this first scene. Now we're going to do the same thing for the second scene. And I've already set those up so you don't have to watch that. I'm going to overlap these the third and the fourth, and I'm going to click between them and I'm going to make the cube transition, right? I'm going to ungroup this for a second because I'm going to show you what happens. So I'm going to move these over so that I can use the cube transition between one and two, two and three, three and four. And just a note, if you have this under, you're not going to get the cube transition. The second, the one that you want to transition to needs to be above. Let me put that back to cube. Now watch. This is going to go to the right. It flips to the right. It's not joined because I ungrouped them so we can just work on it. But you know that if you group those, they'll be together. I'll do that at the end. That's going to the right. Now this one, same direction, going to the right. This one, going to the right. I don't want that to always go to the right. I wanted to have some different directions, right? So what I did, it took a long time for me to figure this out. Um, and I'm hoping I don't take too long to show it here and I can remember some of it. I actually have, um, why is that in my way? I have it all set up in my <laughs> my scenes so that I can just do it from the start and I don't have to do this planning again. But I'm going to group the two of these as I did before, Command-G, and I'm going to group the two of these, the third and the fourth transition, Command-G. Then I'm going to do the transition between those. Now I have to the right. Notice there no see, there's no gap in between, they're together. Then this is going to the right and this is going to the right. There is a gap here because I'm going to have to group those and then they'll be together. But the problem is they're still all going to the right. So this is where I did some adjusting. The first one, I wanted this to go down, right? So what I did is I took this whole group and I can't remember which direction. Let's go one to the left and see what happens with that. It goes up, there we go, it goes down, right? It's no longer going to the right. Now, it goes down, it goes to the right, but that one is going to the right. So I am going to turn this one. I can't remember if that's the direction I went. You're just gonna keep playing with it. So let's see, this one goes down, this one goes to the right, and that one goes up, perfect. So that worked. Now, when I group this, 
they're all going to be butted together. Let's just bring that down so we can see the whole thing, right? Right, and then it goes up, down, right, up. <laughs> all the pictures are off, right? So that's an easy fix. To fix this first one, to make that so it's not the house isn't on its side i'm just going to go in take that image and turn it once now it's right see now it's going to flip oh yeah that's flipping right see the flips get my head going crazy i don't always remember this one is off so i'm going to go in to the third to the second image and I'm gonna flip that. Let's see if that worked. Yep. Yeah. So now it flips down. This one's off. So I have to flip this one to the left. So I'm gonna go into the third scene, go one to the left. And I always check to make sure before I continue. Now that is right. The little bus stop is wrong. The fourth image also has to go one to the left. So let's see if they're all right. It goes down to the right and up. And then you would just continue to do that process going through the whole thing. The problem is if you don't group it. So the secret is in the grouping. Did I group that instead of ungroup? The secret is in the grouping because if you don't group it, then you have some of those gaps and it doesn't always work. So I don't know how long this was, but it took me hours to figure it out. So hopefully this helps you um, and you can make some videos. I'd love to see it. So hope you post some of those. Thanks.